Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Leadership Lessons from Tad Lasso. Uh, and we're your hosts. I'm Chris Baker, and with me is Al Rattan. And we are thrilled to dive into today's topic, which is leading by example. And throughout this series, we've been dissecting the incredible leadership wisdom embedded in the TV show, Ted Lasso. And today we're exploring how Ted's actions consistently resonate louder than his words, showcasing the power of leading by example. So, Al, before we get into it, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Chris. And you know what? This this is a, a great topic because I think that uh, definitely from my past experiences, I've definitely seen leaders that do not necessarily lead by example. Yeah, right. And I can tell you that it's a whole lot easier to follow someone yeah. that is willing to get, you know, get down and dirty, <laughs> you know, get in the trenches with you yeah. than it is somebody barking orders from the ivory tower. So I think this is a great topic for today. It is. It is. Yeah. So what's so, our, our first, uh, we got six teaching points, everybody today, six teaching points and listen up to the end because there is an assignment for you um, oh, as well. Excellent. And that's always good too, because I mean, if, 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 you gotta, you gotta, you gotta apply what you're learning folks. You gotta apply right. what you're learning. Our first, our first teaching point really re revolves around Ted's authenticity. And if you haven't watched the show yet, again, it's on Apple TV plus go watch, go watch. Uh, there's three seasons. Uh, I think you'll, uh, you'll thoroughly enjoy it, but really Ted is an authentic person and it really shows a lot. He doesn't pretend to be someone that he's not, you know, cool. Ted's genuine self is really this refreshing reminder that authenticity breeds trust. You know, the, t the team already know who you are, right? <laughs> right. Just be yourself because that helps them trust and believe that you're not putting on this false sense, right? False identity. Yeah. And by embracing his quirks and his vulnerabilities, he really paves the way for open communication and this deeper connection with his team. So the, the lesson here is to, you know what, be true to yourself and create an environment where your team actually feels comfortable doing the same, being true to themselves. Yeah, yeah it, it is a great point. And I think it's one of the things one of the things here is that self-awareness, right? We have to be aware of who we are so we can be that, right? We could be the person and people talk about be the person you want to become. And it's all about being authentic and, and as you say, leading by example and and not trying to uh, to put on a facade, right? And right. Exactly. say one thing but do another. No, don't do that, right? Do, do what you say. Walk the walk and talk the talk. It's really about being, you know, having integrity with who you right. are. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, and I, I love the, the the definition of integrity that I've seen before is doing the right thing even when no one else is looking. Exactly. Right? Yeah. That's what we're talking about, folks. So yeah. let's look at teaching point number two. It's humility and learning. And Ted's humility and willingness to learn from uh, from anybody is our second teaching point. He, he really admits when he's uh, – or so readily admits when he's unsure or doesn't have all the answers – so this vulnerability not only humanizes him, but also fosters a culture of continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. So leaders who can admit their mistakes and seek growth inspire their team to do the same. Because guess what, folks? None of us are perfect. Nope. So don't try and make out you're perfect. No, nope. you know, we 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 should be failing, right? If we're pushing ourselves and stretching ourselves. Mm -hmm. But failure is only final when you quit. Until then, it's a learning opportunity, not only for you but for your team, right? So embrace it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, and again, humility too is, is, yeah. I just think that there's so many, or it's showing this humility and this vulnerability. So many leaders are afraid that if they do this, that, you know, someone else will take over or they'll right. lose their job or they'll lose the respect of their team or they have to have all the answers. And I just realized, you know, Chris, the older I've gotten, the more, I guess, I guess the more humble and vulnerable I've become right. because now I don't mind going, ah, excuse me. I don't know what you're talking about. Could you be a little bit more clear yeah. where I used to nod and smile and pretend I knew what was going on? Right. <laughs> right. And, and that's the, the, the thing where, where people generally don't like to admit that they've got weaknesses, right? Because they exactly. see that as a weakness. As a weak, Yeah. It's actually yeah. a strength. Right, identify and understand in areas where you're weak in, and then seeking out other people to either help you in that or to partner with in that area. Right, it's a strength. You yeah, know, and exactly. it's the same with us. Al. we've got strengths, we got different strengths, right? And we put those together, 
um, and and we we sort of cover each other's weak areas and together mm -hmm. we're stronger. Right. Absolutely. And that's that's really what a leader should be doing is building a team that is a well-rounded team that supports them and, and, and covers the areas where they're not so good. And exactly. then you, you help lift everybody up. Exactly. And I love what John, John Maxwell teaches. And he has, he's written a book, you know, the 21 year field of the laws of leadership. And, you know, it's sold millions and millions of copies and it's probably one of the best leadership books out there today. Mm -hmm. And he says that even in the 21 laws, he put them in the book, but there's five of those laws that he's not good at himself. Yeah. But he said, yeah. but they're laws. They need to be in there, right? Uh, and I and he's I'm not good in these areas. But he was wise enough to bring people around him that we're were good in those areas. Yeah. So that you'd have a more well rounded leadership team. Yeah. And I think that's that's you know showing that humility and that vulnerability, saying, hey, I'm not I'm not good in this area. I need somebody around me that is strong. Mm -hmm. And, and it, so, yeah, I, you know, take that for what it is, folks. I think you should, that's something you should be doing if you're in leadership. Uh, we'll move on to teaching point number three, and that's really talking about uh, empathy and empathy and action specifically. And, and Ted really does display remarkable empathy. Right. He, he genuinely cares for his players and the staff going beyond these superficial concerns. And I think a lot of people fake it out there today and they don't really understand or show empathy and i think if we did if we did show it i think we'd have a much better world to be honest but you okay. know whether whether he's talking about roy's emotional struggles or nate's self-doubt ted demonstrates the power of listening and understanding and offering support mm -hmm. and and through these these actions he shows that that empathy is more than just a buzzword with him it's a, it's the foundation for effective leadership and he takes that to heart yeah it's so true. And and all of these things really are, are, are things that we're not taught, right? You know, we, no. we're not taught how to think or how to listen. We're taught what to think and and just to listen. <laughs> all right. Exactly. And yeah. and really what we're we're doing here, that power of listening, it, it, you know, I'd go further and say it's the power of active listening. So it's being present mm -hmm. with people, showing that that care, compassion, and concern, that empathy, you know, again being humble and learning from them uh, and being open to that. And Ted's great at that. And then offering that support. Right. And, and, um, you know, people will respond to that. And I've tried to, to do this in, in, um, in my leadership career. And, you know, my early days, I wasn't very good at it, but I've got better and better. Do mm -hmm. I sometimes slip up? Absolutely. We all do. Right. That's what we're saying. We are not perfect. Perfection doesn't exist because right. if it did, we couldn't strive for continual improvement, could we? Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. you know, they, they, it's it, we, we choose the continual improvement rather than, than saying we're perfect as we are. We can't get any better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So our, our fourth point is, is how Ted Lasso teaches us about accountability. All right. That A word, big A word. He doesn't shy away from holding himself accountable or challenging others to do the same. He sets high standards for himself, and by doing that, he inspires those around him to, to step up their game and, and rise up. And mm -hmm. this aspect of leading by example can, can actually transform a whole team's performance and commitment. So, you know, are you expecting others to be accountable for their actions when you're not being accountable for your own? Right. All right. Yeah. Um, you know, it starts with you. All right. Again, it goes back to leading by example. It really does. And you know what? And again, I think this accountability things comes down to, you know, a, a lot with responsibility as well. And as leaders, we're ultimately responsible for the performance of our team. Right. And they'll report to us. Right. And at the end of the day, uh, we're we, we're accountable for their actions as well. So mm -hmm. it's up to us to hold them accountable to their actions, but it's also to the people that, you know, if you're a leader to those that you report to, you're accountable for the entire, the entire, like if you run a retail store, you're responsible for the results of that retail store. You're accountable to your yeah. superiors, the district manager, regional vice president, whoever it may be president of the company. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, we need to take accountability and responsibility for what is happening in our location. Right. And I think a lot of people try to pass the buck, so to speak, instead of standing up and saying, no, you know what? Ultimately, it's my responsibility. Uh -huh. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that there's an interesting um, 
dynamic there with with responsibility and accountability right and I, and i think again as a as a as a leader you're responsible for the whole team's performance of course mm-hmm. you are right and mm-hmm. you you are accountable to to your own performance mm-hmm. but i think you also need everybody else as you said to be accountable for their own performance right yeah. Yeah, um, because absolutely. then you 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 compound that all together and what happens is the the net result is well it's bars right behavior right. actions equals result and success exactly right? so it, so if the people on your team and yourself are displaying below average behaviors and actions guess what you're going to get below average results and success yeah so if you can increase those behaviors and actions the the by you know, 10%, 15% in a positive direction, then your results and your success are probably going to be much greater than 10 or 15% higher because it's a compounding uh, effect. Exactly. Exactly. That's great. So let's, let's, let's move on to point number five and really our fifth lesson centers on Ted's unwavering positive attitude mm. you know, in the, in the face of all these challenges and setbacks, and he does experience a few. Yeah. <laughs> throughout the series, right? Yeah. He, he remains optimistic and really encourages his team to do the same. And I think that, you know, again, this, this just speaks to the, the leader really sets the tone for the organization. Right. And, and if we're, if we're struggling or, and we're going to have bad days, like we've said before, nobody's perfect, yeah. we're gonna have bad days, but if we're struggling and not being positive and, you know, we're negative all the time or allowing the, the, the circumstances of the day dictate our attitude and our behavior and our emotions and our feelings, mm-hmm. then that is contagious throughout the team. So yeah. we really yeah. need to, you know, have that remain that optimistic and that, and that encourager within the organization and this positivity really is infectious and yeah. boost the team morale even in the toughest times right so as leaders we can we can take away this lesson as the as an important the importance of really maintaining this hopeful outlook and really infusing it into our teams by remaining positive right yes we're gonna have bad days yes we're gonna have setbacks but we don't let that we don't want to let that become uh the norm <laughs> in right. our organization or in our team and again there's so many teaching points we could we could uh we could talk on this positive attitude probably for for hours but yeah. it's you know my favorite henry ford quote whether you think you can or you think you can't you're usually right right it's positive attitude right yeah. and so it's that can do attitude it's that looking forward at, at what can we achieve rather than looking back and say oh why you know we we're not going to do that again. We 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 failed there. Let's uh, we don't want that to happen, right. you know. And so so keep moving forward, um, mm-hmm. and you know we've talked again about live in fear of of regret. All right, don't live in right. fear of failure. Live in fear exactly. of regret. Exactly. Um, so keep trying new things. Keep moving forward. Keep inspiring the team. Control yeah. the controllable, mm-hmm. and let everything else go, because if you can't control it stressing about it and worrying about it is not going to make it any different the only person that's going to suffer then is you and your team so so use that positive attitude and that takes work right because negativity comes naturally positivity takes work and it starts with you as a leader right and even if you're not a leader uh, but you're someone that's positive on your team by proxy you are a leader because other people will follow you all right. Exactly. So, so we are all in this so. over somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And pardon yeah. me for stepping away there. And if you watch the video later, you saw me. Maybe <laughs> Chris, next time before we go and hit record, that I remove the dog from my office because <laughs> she thought it was time to play. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. And funny. I was like, I'm trying to record here, Bella. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we, we're nearly ready so you can come play with Bella in a minute. Yeah, so let's move on to our, our last point. And that's. Ted's investment in relationships, and, mm. and this really rounds out our teaching points for today. He he goes beyond the professional realm. He takes a genuine interest in the lives of his players and staff. The investment builds trust and camaraderie, proving that genuine connections lead to increased loyalty and dedication. Wow, and that's a, good. A, a great example of this is, um, and again, I don't want to spoil it if you haven't watched the show, but, but the... Rebecca, who is the, the the chairman of the of, of Richmond AFC, basically brought Ted in as a joke. Right, Ted was a, an American football college coach that they brought in to to manage an English football Premier League team. Right, so right. It, it's not something you would do. Um, 
But Ted actually started taking her in a little cookie every day, mm -hmm. right? And she would eat the cookie and you could see he was building a relationship. You could see he was okay. creating a connection. And it turned out he was actually baking those cookies every day for her. Right. And that that sort of carried on throughout the, the seasons. And um, mm -hmm. it, it really turned that relationship around. And it's a great yeah. example of how you can you can you can build bridges, you can work on relationships and you've got to invest time. You've got to invest effort. Mm -hmm. uh, into those relationships and that will pay you back tenfold hundredfold in the future absolutely and i sort of relate this to you know we we all know about john's uh five levels of leadership and he talks about you know if you're sitting at that first level of leadership yeah you're not building relationships because that's just about a positional level, right? Yeah. You have to follow yeah. me because I have a title. You've put no effort in, you haven't earned, you maybe earned that title in the eyes of the people that promoted you, but you haven't earned that title in the people that report to you. Mm -hmm. uh, you really need to build relationships and that helps move you up those, those levels yeah. of leadership. Yeah. For you're sure. never going to get far at the positional level. No, no, no. So we that's have an awesome. assignment. We, we have so before we wrap up, we want to, we want to talk about this for a moment. So we want you to think about a leader you admire, whether from real life fiction or, you know, even Ted Lasso himself mm -hmm. reflect on their, on the, their actions that demonstrated the concept of leading by example. Now, how did their behavior impact the team's organization? Now take these lessons and apply them in your own leadership journey. And then share your insights with us on social media using the hashtag Ted Lasso Leadership. All right. So again, to reflect on their actions, put them into practice, mm -hmm. you know, apply them in your own leadership journey, and then share what you've learned from this or what you've witnessed from this and doing these things on social media with the hashtag Ted Lasso Leadership. Yeah. And Al, I think what we should do is we should probably go into our um, our Facebook group, mm -hmm. Facebook, our Facebook group, and we should maybe talk about this and and you know share who we feel um, are leaders that we yeah. admire that have displayed this and why. So again, yeah, if, you, if you're not a member of that Facebook group, come over and join us, and yeah. we'll probably do that that uh, live on there within the next um, week or so. I would think. Yeah, just search uh, Facebook, Raise Your Bars Personal Growth Solutions, and you'll see yeah. the page and, and join us in the group. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. Six essential teaching points on leading by example, inspired by the remarkable Ted Lasso. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, actions speak louder than words. And as leaders, it's our duty to set the tone for our teams through our behaviors. So join us next time for episode six, where we'll be delving into resilience in the face of adversity as yet another nugget of leadership wisdom unfolds in leadership lessons from Ted Lasso. Until then, lead with the heart and lead by example. Bye for now. Take care, everyone.